Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm delighted to be here. It's a committee I served on, one of my favorite committees uh, in my time in the Senate, and I'm honored to appear before you. Uh, I expect that two of the things that I did in the last few years are of interest to you, and I've tried to draw from them in my testimony. First, of course, uh, chairing the Piffy Ab, second, chairing Hart Rudman, and third, uh, something that I want to talk about a bit this morning that Chairman Goss is very familiar with, and that is uh, the uh, roles and, uh, and uh, other responsibilities of the intelligence community for the 21st century, uh, which we prepared at the request of this Congress. Uh, I think it's Public Law 971. I wish more people had read it. I want to talk a little bit about this morning. I would highly recommend that every staff member read this before you write your final report, if you haven't already. And I would think that members might want to read some portions of it because it was a very distinguished group of Americans who spent a lot of time looking in advance of 9-11 of precisely the things that you are looking at post 9-11. And I want to just give you a couple of excerpts from that and I will take five or six minutes. I do not have a prepared statement, but rather I thought I would respond to the specific questions addressed to me by the leadership of the committee. The first question that you asked was that our National Study Security Group, Hart Rudman, warned in 2001 that the United States was not prepared to deal with terrorist attacks uh, in the U.S. homeland. Please summarize why you felt that to be true at the time what steps were taken, if any, in response to our report, and, and why uh, we believe important steps were not taken, and what measures remain to be taken. <coughs> Briefly, uh, this uh, commission uh, was uh, commissioned by the Congress and the previous administration. Its task was to prepare a report on U.S. national security 21st century to be delivered to the incoming president in 2001. So no one knew who that would be at that time or what party that person would be on. We're a totally bipartisan group. We spent a huge amount of time. We traveled all over the world. We met with friend and foe. We met with intelligence agencies, those of whom we have good relations and those with whom we have poor relations. And we came to the overwhelming conclusion at the end of our study that we were facing an asymmetric threat to our entire national security structure. And to everyone's surprise, our lead recommendation dealt with homeland security and international terrorism. No one in that committee would have thought at the time that we started that that would have been our conclusion. We would have thought it might have been more in the area of DOD reorganization or intelligence reorganization or changing the State Department, changing public diplomacy. It was not. And you're all familiar with the report. I've discussed it with many of you personally. We said in that report, quote, more or less, large numbers of Americans will die in American soil, victims of terrorism in the coming century. It happened a bit sooner uh, rather than later. Why did we come to that conclusion? It was obvious from the excellent uh, history that Eleanor Hill gave you a few minutes ago, there was an escalation of attacks against American interests. It was quite apparent that the homeland was not secure, and that at a time, at a point in time, those terrorists, be it Al-Qaeda or many other groups, some of which you are, I'm sure, studying, other which you may not be, that someone would launch an attack in this country. We talked about weapons of mass destruction. We talked about weapons of mass disruption. And we laid it out in laborious detail because it was overwhelmingly apparent to all of us that that was going to happen. Uh, we made a number of recommendations. In late January uh, 2001, uh, we presented it to the new administration, to the National Security Advisor, the Vice President through the National Security Advisor and the President, Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense. It was very well received. People were very interested in it. We, we brought it up here. Uh, we met with a number of you on this committee. Uh, to the credit of the Congress, a number of you immediately started moving towards a Homeland Security Department, uh, which is now, I understand, uh, wound up in some controversy, but I expect eventually it will happen. And we made a number of recommendations. The Congress reacted very quickly to them and started to act on them, uh, particularly in the House, uh, Congressman Mac Thornberry, here in the Senate, uh, Senator Fred Thompson, uh, and Senator Joe Lieberman. 
The administration's attitude was, this is an excellent report. We're giving it to an internal task force of the NSC, and we will start to go through it. I find no fault in that. This is a brand new administration. It had much on its plate. It was February, March time frame uh, of 2001. And my understanding is that they were in the process of working on the recommendations. Now, DOD, in fact, had done some of the things that we had recommended. So I would say that although people might criticize and say that the administration should have acted more forthrightly, my sense is for a new administration receiving a, a, a voluminous report, including an implementation plan, they probably did about all that any administration would have done under the circumstances. And let me also say that had every recommendation that we had put into that plan been adopted the day after we gave it to the White House, I seriously doubt that that would have been sufficient to prevent 9-11 for many reasons, including some of the reasons that your staff director has talked about here today. Your second question, uh, we said that military consumers often drove intelligence collection and that given limited resources, the community was neglecting important regions and trends. How did this affect the ability of the United States to understand the growth of capabilities in locations such as Afghanistan and Yemen? Would placing more of the intelligence community under the authority of the director of, the, of Central Intelligence prevent similar problems in the future? The answer to your question is generally yes. Uh, up until September 11th, the bulk of U.S. intelligence efforts had been focused on states. Uh, that has been the historic role of the United States intelligence community. And I might add that our intelligence community, as well as most foreign ones that I've studied, are extraordinarily good at looking at at structure, at capability, and intent. They don't have a very good track record, even working against states, for determining what and when. And I'm not sure that that will ever be totally solved, no matter how hard we try. To try to come up with definition on people's intentions, whether they be states or they be shadowy terrorist organizations, is the toughest assignment given to any intelligence community, and frankly, if you look at the record over the last 50 years, the record is not particularly good, not here or anywhere else. Do I believe or did our commission believe that making the director of uh, the CIA, uh, 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 giving him a stronger role? Uh, we do, uh, but we're not the first ones to say that. Uh, this has been recommended for many years. I mean, you have a director of central intelligence who is also the director of CIA, 85% of that budget is controlled by DOD. From what I read uh, in the papers lately, they would like to get even more control of it. And I leave that to you. You were elected to solve problems like that. Uh, I don't know what the answer is. We have tried to recommend a number of reasonable solutions in this report, of which a number of members of Congress served on. Nothing has happened, except I do believe there is a stronger community coordination efforts since this report than there was before. But you've got a long way to go, and frankly, I think it's in the court of the Congress as much as it is the administration. Uh, we call for the President through the NSC uh, to uh, set strategic intelligence priorities and update them regularly. Was this done? Is it being done today? Well, I can tell you that I'm no longer chairman of the PIFIAB, so I'm no longer privy to those things, but my understanding is that, yes, there has been broad strategic intelligence directives, PDDRs, uh, which have been adopted by this administration. I'm sure they're available to this committee, and I would, I would advocate that you check with them to get a more precise answer. Uh, two more, three more questions you asked. How can the United States improve cooperation between intelligence agencies focused overseas, CIA, NSA, et cetera, and those with domestic uh, focus, such as the FBI? And how could they take full advantage of each other's capabilities? What gaps existed in their cooperation prior to September 11th? I believe that the joint terrorism centers, which th these committees are very familiar with, uh, have come a long way in, uh, in uh, cooperation, but we've got some very interesting issues here that have to do with law, civil rights, the rights of Americans. I was saying to uh, Louis Free before we testified this morning that you go back and read the history of the 1946-47 National Intelligence Act, and it was very clear 
that the FBI was responsible for domestic counterintelligence, and I would expect counterterrorism, and the CIA was responsible overseas, and the CIA had better not come close to putting its nose anywhere near domestic issues. It was a wonderful alliance of strange bedfellows. J. Edgar Hoover and the American Civil Liberties Union. They both had their precise reasons for feeling that way. But the result has been that we have not had the cooperation between these agencies that we should have. I think there ought to be major changes in the law. I have felt that way for a long time. Let me add, just in response to one of the questions posed in one of the opening statements, to create a new MI5 type organization in this country. We do not believe in our commission would be the solution. You've got enormous domestic collect collection capability in the FBI, assuming it's focused in the right direction. That is a tough issue, and one this committee and the Judiciary Committee will have to work with. Um, how effective do you believe that law enforcement tools are for fighting terrorism? Were they relied upon excessively before September 11th? The answer to that, I guess, is yes and no. Uh, Mary Jo White brought very successful prosecutions against a number uh, of terrorist organizations in the Southern District of New York. On the other hand, President Bush says we are now at war. Well, if we're at war, then law enforcement tools will be used, but in a more minor way, and military tools will be used more effectively to deal with the capability of terrorism. So I guess the answer to that question is, is both in the affirmative and in the negative. And finally, uh, any recommendations you may have for improving the intelligence community's performance uh, in fighting terrorism? I believe that the more jointness that you have between these agencies, the more they work in joint counterterrorism centers, the more their information databases become common, the more there is constant daily hourly cooperation between them, the more that the NSA is brought in by statute if necessary to supply the FBI with domestic counterterrorism information, then you will do the improvement you need. I do not believe we need new structures or new systems. We may need different kinds of people. Uh, we may need different kinds of technology. But I don't think there's anything wrong with the systems. I think there's a lot wrong with the, how they've been used uh, over the last 10 years. Finally, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I want to read to you uh, from this report, which was uh, submitted uh, in 1996 to the Congress at the Congress's direction. As I said, Chairman Goss served on this and a number of other people that you all know. It was a very distinguished group entitled Commission on Roles and Capabilities of the United States Intelligence Community. With a lot of great recommendations in it. There's one here that's particularly interesting, and it's from the executive summary. And it is spelled out in detail, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to read you two paragraphs. It's entitled, The Need for a Coordinated Response to Global Crime. Global criminal activity carried out by foreign groups, terrorism, international drug trafficking, proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, and international organized crime is likely to pose increasing dangers to the American people in the years ahead as perpetrators grow more sophisticated and take advantage of new technology. Law enforcement agencies historically have taken the lead in responding to these threats. But where U.S. security is threatened, strategies which employ diplomatic, economic, military, or intelligence measures may be required instead of or in collaboration with law enforcement response. In the Commission's view, it is essential that there be overall direction and coordination of U.S. response to global crime. I will tell you that nobody evidently read it.